What's going on? I'm Sam, and today I want to talk about how I got a lot of my heavy machinery for free. I've seen a few comments wondering how I got so much of this stuff. Maybe I won the lottery. They are wondering why it seems like I have such a huge disposable income. And an answer that covers a big part of this, I'm going to be explaining in this video. A lot of my other stuff I have bought for cheap because when there's good deals I like to buy stuff. Sometimes I sell it for higher or trade it off. So buy sell trading usually gets me some of my stuff. But I'm going to be concentrating on all this heavy machinery that I got from one of my old jobs. And there's your first hint right there. So we got to go back, I don't know, four or five years to when I was the lead engineer at a UAV company. At this job we did a whole bunch of design, fabrication, uh, composite, layup, pretty much anything we needed to do to make UAVs and some of the equipment to operate those UAVs. So we designed and built some mobile ground control stations and UAVs, fixed wing, as well as multi-rotor. It was a really awesome job and I learned so much about composite materials such as uh, fiberglass layup, vacuum bagging, and just everything required to make UAVs and repair them. One of my favorite projects was this trailer we made. I thought it looked really cool and it just turned out great. I even helped convince them to get a mill. We got this mill for a steel. It had a few things wrong with it, such as the Z-axis gear was stripped, so we took it apart and fixed that. I think we only paid $500 for it. We did have to clean it up a lot and spend some time and money getting it fixed. It's still missing a few things which I need to order and replace. It did come with a power feed that doesn't work and the digital readout, which is really good. The digital readout is worth pretty much as much as we paid for the mill. So after a few years working there, it was not a very good time for UAVs. The market was super saturated. Everyone was trying to do it. And we started having some cash problems. We had a potential contract we were waiting on, but it hadn't hit yet. And I was the first one to tell my boss, hey, you need to let everyone, including myself, go. And once this contract hits, hire us back on. Now that wasn't quite the easiest thing to say because telling your boss that you need to be fired, you know, isn't really that great. But I told him anyway, and none of us were let go, which was great because I didn't really necessarily want to be out of a job. The money didn't come, and it didn't come, and we were waiting. What happened was we ended up missing a paycheck, but the next paycheck, we got a double paycheck. So I was like, okay, this is actually pretty cool, so I'm all good with this. And pretty much that next month I was offered a bonus if I was able to hit some goals in that month. And I was like, heck yeah, I dropped everything I was doing and I started working towards that bonus. So the first week working for that bonus, I think I worked about 80 or 90, probably about 90 hours. And the next week I worked just about the same, probably 96 hours. And we missed that next paycheck. But I was thinking, that's fine. I'm working towards this bonus. We got a double paycheck last time. I'll keep going. And the next two weeks, I worked again like 90 hour plus weeks. And I wasn't able to hit all the bonus requirements for all the bonuses. We didn't actually have enough cash for me to get the stuff and people I needed to complete them. <laughs> but after I talked to my boss, he agreed to do a partial payment, which was great because I was working an average of 95 hours those four weeks in a row. At this job, I averaged probably 50 or 60 hour weeks, and it was salary, which wasn't that great working overtime. There was one day I worked about 36 hours, and I only left the building for about 30 minutes to go and get food one time, and another one where I worked about 32 hours in a row and I don't think I left the building at all and there was one week the week that I worked the most in my whole life where I worked 106.5 hours that week that was so crazy it might have been one of those 30 hour plus days in that week I think when you do the math if you work 106.5 hours a week you get less than seven hours a day for your commute both ways going home, getting dressed, taking a shower, sleeping, plus any meal breaks you might have. It was pretty rough, but I'm glad I did it. This job was one of the first times I learned that I would rather work very hard for myself 
than for someone else. Not saying I have any hard feelings or I regret the experience, it's just the opposite because it set me up for where I am today. If things didn't go how they would, I probably still would be working for someone else and I might not be quite as happy as I am right now. So let's get back to that. I worked for that whole month and I didn't get all the bonuses hit but we didn't get the paycheck now for the second time in a row. I was getting a little bit worried here, but I was sure the money was gonna hit at some point and you know, maybe I'd get a triple paycheck or a quadruple paycheck. I kept working though, not nearly as hard. I was going back to 40, 50, 55 hour weeks at this point. And I think I worked for another month, maybe month and a half actually. There were like three or four other guys I think at this point one of the guys had quit pretty early on and the others were still continuing to work. And I think it was just about two and a half months is when everyone was officially let go. So you can imagine at this point, I was owed a lot of money, not just the paychecks, but a little bit of the makeup bonus. And there was even like a partial raise that I was back owed. So it did add up to a substantial amount of money. Some of the other guys, especially the ones that weren't owed quite as much, got on a payment plan. Uh, one of the guys took a payout for some equipment. I didn't really work out anything at this point. I wasn't too worried about it. And this is about the time when I went to work for Peter full time. It seemed like really good timing because we were almost at the point where Peter could afford to pay me to work full time. And the plan was that with my help, we could increase the revenue enough that he definitely could afford to pay me. But I'll go into some of that more in another video. So there were no more employees at that company, but they were still kind of in the background working on trying to raise some money. And they kept paying the rent for another year it was over a year it was a year and a few months but eventually he decided to stop paying rent and get the stuff out because it had been over a year and there was no more money coming in so he asked if he could put some of the stuff at peter's shop the idea was he could get all his stuff out of the old business and save the money there and all the stuff could go into peter's shop where we could use it for videos for pretty much free rent i had already talked to him about possibly getting paid out in equipment so I ended up just taking as much as we could fit in Peter's shop, maybe even a little more because it ended up getting really, really crowded. But I did figure if I didn't end up getting paid, I would end up inheriting some or all of the equipment. And that's pretty much what happened. Over that year, I had talked to him every once in a while about uh, how we were gonna do the payoff. And at the end, we decided I just kind of inherited everything from that shop that was there. He's still storing a bunch of stuff at his house, which isn't necessarily gonna be mine, but it might come live here at this shop so that he can save some money on storage and open some space at his house. So there's a really nice conference table and chairs that I might build a conference room because it would be really cool to have a nice conference room. There's some other stuff that would be cool to have, like some of the desk, and I think I'd probably get the ATV and go-kart. So those would be fun to have around and I might even be able to use those in some projects. So did I really get this stuff for free? It really depends on how you look at it because after all, maybe I would have never got paid back at all. And in that case, not getting paid back at all and getting all this stuff I got for free. But on the other hand, I was owed a lot of money. He could have done a few things where he didn't have to pay us out at all, but he's a very nice guy, no hard feelings against him, and he did want to make sure everyone was happy. So he paid out, I think pretty much everyone at this point is caught up, which is amazing. He felt really bad about even having to let us all go. I really do like this guy. He was a great boss, a good person, and I'm not gonna burn any bridges from this. There's no hard feelings at all. He's still trying to see if he can help me getting me some work, and I'm still seeing if I can help him by getting that ambulance ready to go when some guys come to check on it in a few days. So everything's good between us, and I'm pretty sure there's no hard feelings between him and any of the employees, so that's great. That situation was super stressful for everyone, and it ended up working out, so that's saying a whole lot about him. But yeah, so no hard feelings about him. I just wanted to make that super clear. Why had all this stuff in Peter's shop? It was a whole lot of stuff, so I ended up slowly selling off some of it, which now I almost regret because I have the space and need for some of it. Like I sold the bandsaw and the horizontal bandsaw, a giant oven for composite curing that I wanted to turn into a powder coating oven, a couple of the benches, and just some miscellaneous stuff like that, which 
Honestly would have been a little bit useful if I kept them. This was before I knew I was getting this shop. So it was okay. I made some space and I got a little bit of money which helped. So now we'll just kind of walk around and I'll show you specifically what I got out of this deal if you want to call it that and depending on how you look at it I might have done very good I might have done okay I look at it like I never really had to receive a cent from him so I did very good but when you look at how much I was owed it's more than the price of a new car and I'm not talking about your base model Honda Civic I'm talking about like a Civic Si with some extra features <laughs> so it was a decent amount of money and it did actually put me into debt there for a little bit i never completely got out of that debt but now i made it worse because i have no income and a whole lot more that i have to pay for but i have my ways to pay for it for a little bit i have till at least december and still i have to start liquidating some like really big assets we'll see I think I'll make it work. Anyway, let's look at the first stuff, which are these toolboxes. So I ended up getting these three toolboxes. They came fully loaded with tools, not wrenches and sockets like you're thinking. Just some miscellaneous tools that we used around the shop. At some point, I really need to go through these and kind of reorganize because I don't really like having caulk in two drawers, let alone one. But I don't necessarily have other stuff that I want to store in these, so it's not a huge deal. You can see there's like calipers, tape measures, taps, dies, pliers, screwdrivers, wire terminals, wire brushes, rivet tools, pens, pencils, just a whole bunch of random stuff in these. So there's those. I got these two big work tables from there, which was really awesome. We used them at Peter's shop and I think he's a little bit sad that I took him. You can see the drone here that we used in a couple of Peter's videos. I don't actually own this. It still belongs to my old boss, but he's let us use it in videos, which is super cool. I got this big table saw from there, drill press, grinder, chop saw, sandblaster, and bench. The South Bend 9 inch lathe I got from there. The CNC router, which is one of the bigger, more expensive things that I ended up getting. Of course, the mill port, which is just like a bridge port knockoff. I really need to replace everything in here. It's probably only going to be like $180 in parts, I think, last time I priced it out. The fire cabinet, along with everything in it, which I've really been needing to go through. The air compressor, the scaffolding I got from there, along with this material rack and a whole bunch of composite supplies. All of these shelves with pretty much everything on them. The rack of hardware is pretty useful. There's some random tools, fiberglass material, just a little bit of everything on these. This TIG welder came from there. It had been super useful to Peter. I've used it a few times, but I mean, he's obviously got a lot more use out of it because he's built at least two airplanes with it. The MIG welder is mine though. I had bought that in high school and I think I've been using it for over 10 years now. The actual laptop that I use was my work laptop from this place. It's not necessarily the most expensive though it kind of is when you look at the software. One of the best things that I ended up taking away from this job was I was able to keep my work laptop which has a copy of SolidWorks on it. And this laptop in SolidWorks is what I've used when I designed a whole bunch of Peter's projects along with some of my own stuff and things I've done for other people. If I wasn't able to keep that I probably wouldn't have been able to make some of the things I made for Peter or I guess I would have I just would have had to learn Fusion which I've tried a little before and I really do like SolidWorks a lot better so I was very thankful that I was able to keep that. That's pretty much it. There's some other random stuff like tooling for the CNC and bridge port along with the computer to run the CNC which of course has the software on it. There's a few ways to value things and depending on how you add it up I either did really good or really good. I'd like to think I did pretty well with this because not even including all the experience I got from working there and lessons I might have learned, I ended up getting all this equipment and I was able to set up my own shop. And one of the cool things is since that old boss and I are still in contact and there's no hard feelings, I might be getting some work from him and I might be working on some projects he might be getting. Since he doesn't have his own shop anymore, we can do it here. Or if I'm able to find any work on my own that might have gone to that old company, I can take it and just give him a little bit of a kickback. 
Pretty much all the other equipment in here is mine that I sourced myself, like five miter saws. I have no idea why I have so many. You saw me buy the forklift. I got that for super cheap. This Honda Shadow I got because the guy owed me some money and he didn't have the cash to pay, so I took his bike instead. I mean, he actually offered it. I would have rather had cash, but whatever, that's what I got. A lot of times when I sell a car or truck or trailer, I'll just buy another for usually about the same price and I just keep trading up. So that's how I got that car trailer and some of these trucks. I'm sure I'm probably missing some things, but you get the idea. A lot of this equipment I got in return for working without getting paid. I guess when I really look at it, the machine shop wasn't necessarily free. It was still a payment for me working. I'm really glad I was able to make this video. I had been wanting to make it for a little bit of time now. My schedule's been off recently, and I'm hoping this gives me a little bit of time to reset my schedule, which would be great. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it answered a few of your questions. Like I said, I've been wanting to make this video for a little bit of time now. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. You ready to go? Let's go home. Come on.